Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Lou Patton, and uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the Dallas Cowboys. Not so much the nuts and bolts of the team, but primarily the ownership and the uh, management style of the different owners that have had the Dallas Cowboys. Um, the, the Cowboys have had three owners in their existence, and even though all three of their management styles of those owners have been different, the bottom line is, is that the Dallas Cowboys organization has always been a very profitable endeavor for each of the owners. Uh, the first owner was Clint Markison, Jr. Um, he, like Jerry Jones, uh, got his claim to fame and his money from his father, and so it was handed down to him and the family. And in 1960, the NFL approved uh, the franch uh, franchise for Dallas. Well, back then in the NFL, uh, each of the teams had to approve that. Uh, you know, in order for a franchise to become a reality, uh, there couldn't be any dissension or dissenting votes. It had to be unanimous for the league to uh, admit Dallas. Well, wouldn't you know, the owner of the Washington Redskins, Sam Johnson, uh, had a market on the south, and he didn't want Dallas to have a franchise because that would take away from his uh, uh, pot of gold. So, uh, ironically, his wife had written the fight song for the Redskins, Hail to the Redskins, and uh, Clint Murkison was bright enough to buy the rights to that song, and he told Johnson, said, look, if you're not going to be able to play this song that your wife wrote, because I bought the rights to it, you're not going to be able to play that at your games unless you vote to let Dallas into the league. And wouldn't you know, they did. And so that started the rivalry between the Redskins and Cowboys, by the way. That's kind of ironic. Uh, also, through preparing for this speech, I found out that uh, Clint Murkison was a colorful character. Um, he was a supporter of LBJ and hosted a party on November 21st, 1963, the day before John Kennedy came to town. So so that started the, uh, that's another whole ball of wax, but I didn't realize that until I started doing research for this uh, presentation, if you will. So I, I plan to go back and investigate that uh, to see exactly uh, how he and LBJ and J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the Secret Service, how that all played into the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Uh, very interesting. Um, but as far as his management style, as far as Clint Murkison's uh, management style, he bought the team and he hired Tech Schramm as the general manager and Tom Landry as the coach uh, to run the team. He was a what's called a hand off, hands off uh, owner. He didn't he didn't get involved with the Cowboys in any way until it was time to you know accept the Lombardi Trophy for winning the Super Bowl. That's the only time you saw him. Uh, Tex Ram, the GM, pretty much left the nuts and bolts of the team to the coach, Tom Landry. So uh, while uh, Tex Ram was investigating ways to make the team better for the league, for example, uh, Tex Ram invented the little marks on the yard lines, like the 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, the little mark to show you which side of the 50 he was on because when TV, if you came into the room and you saw the game was on TV, you automatically know which side of the 50 it's on. That was Tex Schramm's idea. Uh, also, uh, he was on the rules committee. Uh, he was responsible for the Dallas Cowboys always playing on Thanksgiving, something that's held up even today. So uh, Tex Schramm was doing that sort of thing, and that left Tom Landry as the coach, and he was in charge of the team. Uh, you know, and that says a lot because that's not the way it's run now, obviously. Um, but Tom Landry, if you played for Coach Tom Landry, you know, you, you, you could be fired very easily by him. So you played extra hard, I would imagine, if you're, if you're on a Tom Landry team. But at any rate, during uh, Clint Murgerson's uh, reign with the Cowboys, the Cowboys had 20 consecutive winning seasons from 1966 to 1985. Um, and then, of course, times got bad. Uh, Clint Murkison was in the oil, gas, and uh, business, and things started to fall, and he had to claim bankruptcy. So he sold the team in 1985 and uh, sold it to H.R. Baum Bright. Uh, and, of course, Mr. Murkison died two years later from pneumonia. So, but enter Mr. Baum Bright. Baum Bright was a graduate of Texas A&M. 
uh, everything was Aggies, uh, nothing wrong with that, but uh, he pretty much left the business to uh, uh, Tex Shram and, and Coach Landry too. Uh, however, his business was going bad, and in five years, uh, he bought the Cowboys for $85 million uh, from Clint Ferguson, and he sold it to, to uh, Jerry Jones for $170 million. So you can see that from the beginning, and by the way, I feel like I'm an authority on the Cowboys. I've watched every game or listened to every game on television or radio, so I've been there every day with the Cowboys, so I kind of feel like I have, uh, uh, I, I'm a, what do you call it, a, a subject matter expert. So I feel like I can uh, tell you from experience that, that uh, the Cowboys have always been a beneficial team when it came to money. Uh, he's, uh, again, uh, Baum sold to Jerry Jones for $170 million. Now, according to Forbes magazine, uh, you know, even though Jerry Jones bought the team in 1989 for uh, $170 million, the Dallas Cowboys now are worth $2.1 billion. That's according to Forbes magazine. So, uh, the Dallas Cowboys are the only team in the NFL that can license their own products to sell jerseys. Cowboys make money off of that. That's why it's advantageous for players to come to play for Dallas because they get some of that uh, money off the merchandise. Uh, they're the only team in the NFL to distribute their own merchandise. So, even though the Cowboys haven't been to the playoffs in years and years and years, they continue to be uh, the second uh, best franchise as far as valuation in sports, uh, bar none. They're the number one team in the NFL for certain, and they only trail uh, Man United in the soccer league as far as, a, uh, as far as the value of the team. So the Cowboys have done a super job uh, finance-wise now. Uh, and also, uh, I'll tell you that the Cowboys have won five Super Bowls, two uh, while uh, Clint Ferguson had the team and three while Jerry had them. Uh, and Jerry's Super Bowls, I think, came because of Jimmy Johnson, and Jimmy Johnson was the on-field kind of guy like Tom Landry, where he had some say-so as to who comes and goes. So until we get a coach like that again, I don't know that the Cowboys will win the Super Bowl again, but the main thing about this whole presentation is, is that they're very valuable and they're going to continue to make money. Thanks a lot, and how about them Cowboys?